Hi, everybody. Welcome to episode 61 of um, Hair Socials Lives with John Anthony, the return of the John Anthony with Vivid Cocktail. How are you, mate? I'm good, thank you. I'm good. How are you? I'm very well, mate. Thank you so much for giving us your time tonight. And uh, without further ado, I'll pass you straight over to the world, mate. Thank you. Thanks for having me back. Um, I can't, when was it I was last on here? Was it like, it was March, April time? Yeah, six months ago. Bloody hell, way back at the very beginning, wasn't it? That was uh, live from my kitchen in Blackpool. So, this time you're live from my salon in Blackpool. It looks so, fantastic, mate. Great setup. Thanks. I've been doing some digital training, um, as you can tell. <laughs> so thanks, guys, for joining in. Obviously, as Simon introduced me, my name's John, and uh, I'm a vivid colour lover. And I'm part of the Matrix education team as well. So I'm coming to you tonight from Blackpool, sharing my love for vivids, vivid cocktailing, and just just playing, just playing with colours and playing with the cocktails and just sharing all sorts with you, really. So I would love some feedback from you. If you, if you have any vivid questions as I'm going on, as I'm chatting, if you've got any cocktails that you want me to throw together and try, then throw it at me. Like, let's make it quite interactive and quite fun. I've got a little mannequin head here, and I wish you could see my whole setup. But in order to to be able to see me in the head, like yeah, it's impossible to show you everything. So I've got a nice little bar of this, and we're going to cocktail, and uh, yeah, create some really beautiful formulas that hopefully you can take away. Have we got any vivid lovers in the room? Yeah, let's ask the question. Anyone there who's watching, I've just shared it to the group, so hopefully now the viewers will start to uh, fall into the group. Um, hi John, looking forward to tonight's live. That's from Amanda at Sex, as you know well. Hi Amanda, I'm seeing her for soon. Um, and Elaine Wayne has put hi John, hi Simon, hello Elaine. Hi guys. So yeah, first of all, um, again, I'm going to crack on and I'm going to mix some formulas. I'm going to chat to you about cult. But for anybody that's watching this, I when I saw Simon posted on Hair Socials, reaching out and asking people to to get involved with Hair Socials, and I thought, you know what, I'm just going to message him again, and I'm going to jump in and, and let's do it. And my, a little message for you, if you're thinking about going live or you want to get involved with something like Hair Socials, or try your first time at doing live, just bloody do it. Jump on your Instagram or jump on your Facebook. And even if it's just you showing your salon off to your clients or showing a product off, like you're not going to be able to do your third and your fourth until you do your first. So give it a go. Jump on a live and I look forward to seeing it on a Facebook or an Instagram page soon. Yeah. Would you agree, Simon? Yeah, absolutely, mate. 100%. It's a, it's a nerve wracking thing. I remember my first one uh, for Matrix and I remember absolutely sort of getting anxiety levels up to them through the roof and, and talking myself out of it all day. But once you've done it, you want to do it again. Absolutely. And I still, we still get that. And even the professionals that are on every night doing it, like we're still getting them anxiety levels going through the roof. Just, just finding a calm space, playing some music before you go on, having a bit of a trial run with some mates on a video call, like all of that, it just helps massively and it'll help your confidence as we sort of go into this digital world that's come out of lockdown and COVID-19. So definitely give it a go. And uh, on another note, I want to just reach out and say hello to a young lady who I am extremely proud of, who has been watching her socials. And I know that she watches because I see on her Facebook and her Instagram that she is creating looks that she sees on the hair socials pages. Now, this lady got a little bit of stick recently for a picture that she put on social media. What was a picture of work that some hairdressers didn't agree with. But I'm going to share a positive message to you, Amy, and I want you to keep being you, keep sharing your creations, keep learning and keep self-developing because I'm proud of watching your little journey. And don't take that negative comment and let it ruin your path for success. So that is a little message to you, Amy, and I'm going to crack on mixing some colours. Love that. I don't know who you are, Amy. I've not heard this story. I had no prep in that. But, uh, yeah, keep doing it, man. Don't, don't let anyone put you down. Do not let anybody put you down, Amy. Amy Alderman, she follows the pages. She had a lot of stick recently, and, and it was just fun to watch it, and I didn't see any of it. So, um, Amy, I'm supporting you, and I've loved watching you grow, and I've loved watching you on Hair Socials, I've watching you copy the work from Hair Socials and keep doing what you're doing because you're going to make a great stylist, and you are making a great stylist. So let's crack on. Let's get started with tonight, and let's make some beautiful cocktails so we're going to pretend that Lucky Ducky Yellow, one of my favourites, and this is what I've used here from Matrix, 
direct, so call occult. In fact, she's mixed with 50% clear and uh, 50% lucky ducky yellow on the fringe. But I use yellow a lot to play around with my cocktails. On its own, it's stunning. But mixed in with other colours in the cult range, it can make some really pretty colours. So we're going to pretend that in their cocktail in session, Lucky Ducky is the lemonade. So my first cocktail I'm going to make for you guys is a beautiful green. Now, I know that Matrix, So Colour Cult, we do a lovely clover green. But I'm going to make a bespoke green. Because we want to make a colour that the client can't go and replicate. The client can't leave. And when it's faded out six, eight weeks later, they can't go on Amazon or go on online somewhere and buy a green and whack it in their hair. You're going to make something bespoke to them. One of my favourites to make is my lemonade. Three parts. Does that look like three parts? Three parts lemonade. <laughs> and dun, 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 one shot of mermaid teal. Now this makes like a dark green apple, like a mint leaf, dark green. It's just really pretty. One of my favourites. So, again, mermaid teal. One part mermaid teal. This is me using my scales and being really professional. So, that, that, can you see that? With the PPE gloves on and everything, yep. Yep, so that's that mixed up. And I'm going to get my gloves on because I uh, don't want to get messy. And I've got my apron. I'm going to walk through this mannequin head. So I've split them into sections and I've got each section. One, two, three, four, five, six. We're going to do a different cocktail in each section, but we're going to split the sections in half. So we're going to alternate it. So we're going to do the apple first. I'm going to show you this, actually. Let me show you. We're going to mix a lovely bespoke apple colour. And we're going to blend that in to the lemonade on its own. So when you're using your um, the, your cult range, do you find that it mixes uh, true to sort of how it goes on the hair, you know, the visual of it? I do. I do. I, I like to play around a lot as well. So beside me, you'll see like little bits of tissue where I've been playing and practicing. You've got your um, mapping paper as well that you can use to, to create, your to see your tones. And also a pile of wefts that I've got that I just picked up online. So I'll, I'll play with them before the client's coming in so I can show the client the goal. Um, so there we go, a pretty little lovely apple color. And then I've got a lucky ducky yellow on it. So, so this is gonna be my first cocktail. If that was alcohol, what would you call it? Would it be like an apple vodka spritzer or something like that? I don't know. Let's, let's, get, um, let's get this on and let's show you. So if you are using so call alcohol, You'll know there's so many benefits. And one of the benefits that I'm a big fan of is the fact that it, it doesn't smudge. It doesn't, um, the technology in it, it's got that stay put technology. So when you're working with the cold colours, where you put it is where it stays. They're not going to bleed and they're not going to mingle into each other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work with a fine section because this is not about a technique as such. This is about the cocktail and about sharing everything to do with cult that I can share. There's a technique thrown in as well, because we want a nice result picture at the end. And I want to show you a nice creative rainbow using bespoke cocktail and colours from Colt. Uh, while you're just starting off, I'll read a few of the comments out for you, because there's a lot of positivity coming from uh, the Amy comment earlier. So you've got uh, absolutely no, uh, we are creative in this industry, forever learning. Please keep sharing your work. And that's from Amanda, Linda Gilder, my mother-in-law, says, uh, good luck, Amy, keep up the good work. Uh, we are the best in this ind industry. You can be yourself, Jet Lou. Uh, let Let Lou, sorry. And then um, we've got where was it? Here we go, Cassandra. No space for negativity in this industry. Too many people quick to judge. Keep doing what you're doing. And she then came back with an answer to your question of a uh, what would you call this drink? And she called it Apple Tina. Apple Tina. No, I love the positive messages, guys. And it's I felt it was really important to to start with that because I wanted to show support to Amy. So we've done our apple. We've got a beautiful apple cocktail going on in there. It's got the yellow in it. Now, by putting the yellow in there, and then I'm going to blend it into yellow, what happens then? If I was trying to blend the, the green on its own, clover green, into lucky ducky yellow, yes, it would blend, but it wouldn't blend as, what's the word, smoothly maybe? 
because I've created something a little bit more bespoke and I've softened and created a green that's already got the yellow in it, as I'm going to blend this yellow into it, it blends a lot smoother. Does that make sense? Yeah. So again, keeping a nice tight grip of all of the colour, uh, all of the ends, I'm going to work my little yellow banana, my lemonade into the ends. Yellow banana. That's because I always refer to a fruit bowl. Right. First cocktail done. First cocktail applied. Using my finger and my thumb and just diffusing that line and blending them in together. Keeping the, the ends away nice and tight. Making sure that my yellow at the end stays in its purest form. Pure yellow. Just blend that in, diffusing them lines. And that is my first cocktail. Gets a bit messy, so you need to get your gloves on and you need to start to, to wipe your hands after each one. So have we um have we got any coat lovers in the house, Simon? Have we got any vivid lovers? Uh, I'll put it to the group. I've also asked the, the question on there, if you can see that, Air Sources, everybody. I've just highlighted it. Who is a creative client? Because it's all right sometimes having these people, but it's having the, um, sorry, having this creativity, but we need the people to do it on, don't we? Yeah, we do. Sorry, excuse this little patch here because this is where I've previously been working. But what I'm going to do now, as you can see, I've took that panel at the side and I've done green into the yellow and then I'm going to go yellow into the green. This is how I'm going to work on the first section. So again, when that's down, I'm going to create a right kind of zigzaggy, not zigzaggy, but a nice uh, messy cult rainbow going on with bespoke formulas. It's going to look really, really, really pretty. Yeah, I think, like, you've got to remember, though, with Colt and with Vivids, they don't need, like, it doesn't necessarily need to just be for this kind of look. Like, it doesn't have to be a strong, um, like, makeover Vivid. It can be something, just even a glossing over a red or mixing your royal purple in with some clear to create, like, a soft violet over a balayage. Like, it doesn't need to be so intense or so creative. It's got so many, so many uses. It's super, super versatile. Yep, you've got a few yeah. people commenting back saying it. Elaine Swan says she loves it, obviously. Uh, Kim Burns loves it, says most of her clients work, uh, most of her work is vivid. Uh, and then uh, there was some, oh, Jackie Lyon said love cult. Um, and then just a quick one, yeah. Julie Medlin has said, um, she's just joined, please, because someone enlighten me on what's happened. Julie, I've mixed up, You're, you've come to my bar in Blackpool. <laughs> <laughs> You can't go to a bar anywhere else, but you're going to join the bar on hair socials, and you're going to you're going to be pulled into a cocktail session. Um, yeah, I'm making bespoke formulas. I'm creating different colours to what what we just pick up off the shelf. We're gonna we're gonna tweak it ever so slightly, make it bespoke, so that the client cannot go elsewhere and can't recreate that look on their own. They need you. They need your creative formulas. So this green was mermaid teal, one part. And three parts lucky ducky yellow, making like a beautiful apple -y mint leaf colour. Really, really pretty. It blends well with the yellow as well because we've softened that grey. We've created a bespoke green. And together they will just diffuse nicely and they'll blend in really well together. And then we'll just lay that over. Pretty. Friend of the uh, the page, Elena, has said that when she gets a, a creative client who wants it or someone who wants a vivid, she gets like a little girl. She gets so excited. Yeah, I'm the same. I'm gonna just go write that one up here. What I've done. So that's a mermaid teal. Can you see that? All right. Teal. Three parts. No, that's lies. Forget that. Teal one part. <laughs> Yellow, three parts. That's cocktail number one. Are you a lefty? I'm a lefty, so I'm kind of like upside down. <laughs> over the top. But that, just, I just love looking at it as it's developing as well. So the processing time for cult is anything up to 30 minutes. So depending on what you're doing with it, um, you know, if it's a gloss and service at the back wash, you might not necessarily leave it on for 30 minutes. But if it's a... Uh, an actual creative look, then yeah, you probably would leave it on for 30 minutes. So, next cocktail, let's make a peach. How would you make a peach in cult? Tell me your peach formulas, because I'm going to tell you my peach formula. 
Dun, dun, dun. Well, I like these little tests. These are good. Yeah. I'd love to hear what everyone else does for a nice peach. So my peach I'm going to share with you is starfish coral. One part. Would you say that's one part? Yeah. A little bit more. Starfish coral, one part. Then we've got the lemonade. What's the lemonade? Lucky ducky. Three parts. <laughs> Don't confuse me. <laughs> Where's my clear? So three parts yellow. So three parts clear. Oh, this we've got we've got some answers coming in. We've got um, clear orange alert and sparkling rosé from Cassandra. Yeah. Kim Burns has said yellow and a tiny bit of coral. There we go. And uh, Linda, my mother-in-law, she says she's a lefty as well. <laughs> so you just make a really pretty peach colour. Can you see that? Beautiful. So to cool that peach down, though, if you felt that peach was a little bit warm, what I would suggest doing, depending as well, if you're working on a warm piece, a little tip is drop a tiny, tiny drop of royal purple into your formula. So the purple, the violet and the purple is just going to control the yellow and just control that warmth ever so slightly. So if you feel like it's too warm. So we've got a beautiful peach, set that aside. Now I'm going to make a bespoke orange. So I've got my lemonade. And again, the reason I'm doing them bespoke, they're just going to blend a little bit easier when diffusing the lines. It just makes a little bit softness creates a softer palette as well, and they blend so easy. So we've got our lemonade, and then I'm gonna drop a bit of red hot, which could be a uh, red aftershock. That stuff is rotten if anyone's drank it. And just a drop of red hot, and let's make a bespoke orange. I haven't had red aftershock in years. <laughs> Now, these two colours together, you look at them, complement each other. And they're going to blend in really well together. So when you're working and blending them, breaking up any lines, you're going to get a really, really pretty blend. So we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to take my section and I'm just going to split it in two. And I'm going to work through the bottom section first. Clip that up at the way. Just get messy with it. Uh, Julie Medlin has put that's the exact same colour as the mango asshole that she's currently eating. Oh my god! <laughs> really? Oh yeah, I was telepathic and read your mind. These are just some of my favourite go-to formulas. We, um, Cassandra, who's on the the chat, she works uh, in the salon beside me, so she she's a cult lover and she loves to create different cult tones and. We, uh, she particularly uses tones like this a lot on her elderly clients. Like, weirdly, her elderly ones love these kind of peaches and oranges. And it's just really nice to be able to offer something that's a little bit bespoke and a little bit softer than the orange on its own. Because, yeah, the orange is beautiful, but it might just be too much for that, for that client. I, re I remember the story from your first lab. How old was the lady? I think she passed away, didn't she? Know? But she who was the lady yeah. that you did? Yeah, that were it. And then she, uh, she had some crazy haircut. That of course. She had some crazy colours and some crazy yeah. hair. So what I used to do, this was before cult was a thing. So we were using crazy colour. So I'm just diffusing them two cocktails together. Um, we were using crazy colour and I diluted it into uh, water yeah. in like little bowls. And then we used the spray gun from the spray bottle. And she lay back at the back where she had short, spiky, funky hair. And we just sprayed it. Like attacked her head with different yeah. colours, red, yellow. It just looked incredible. I think there's a picture on my Instagram somewhere that's that can be found. But um, yeah, just really, really incredible. It was just she loved it. Yes, the trick there, John Anthony. What is your Instagram, please? My Instagram is John Anthony Hair. So John Anthony spelt with an E because Simon likes to miss it. <laughs> He's not missed it tonight though. That's Simon's a ten out of ten. I think I remember the first time you missed it, and I was like, "That's like writing Marks and Spencers without the mark, the M, and calling it Ark and Spencers." 
Like, you can't do that. <laughs> so here's my peach cocktail, and I'll write this up on the board so it's there. The peachy cocktail was the starfish coral, the lucky ducky yellow, and clear. And then we're blending that into a bespoke orange. As well, what you'll notice I'm doing is I'm working around the colour wheel. So I'm working with the colours that are sitting beside each other. When we look at the colour wheel, we know that the colours near or beside each other are going to blend well into each other. Because obviously the colour wheel works like that. So don't go opposite. Don't try and blend a, a blue into an orange or a purple into a yellow because you're just going to get some murky colour in the middle. Think of the colours that are just around the wheel. Uh, Nicola Sol, this is a good one, mate. Step back to the bosses. Uh, I'm loving this. It's really interesting. Now, I haven't used coal, but it's making me want to try it. Yes, Nicola. Well, that's what it's all about. You know, you can be as bold and bright and, and vivid as you want, but like I say, you can you can clear everything down and pastelize and create different formulas, different colours for individuals. Bespoke. Uh, we love that. Bespoke. It's a good word, isn't it? I used to, I worked for Matrix now for two years, and prior to Matrix, I used a different brand, which is irrelevant to my story. But what is, what is the point is um, that this is one of them colours that it doesn't seem to ruin everything that it touches in terms of like your tint bowls, your brushes, your trolleys. It's such an easy sort of malleable product I found as well, and I must admit, I love that about it. Yeah, and I, I, I totally agree with you. But then, in the other aspect, it stays so well in the hair. It's yeah. literally stained the hair, doesn't it? But it doesn't stain everything else around it. That that was my issue. Prior to meeting sort of Matrix World, uh, I, I was finding that you, you could only use one like, colour bowl for vivid colours because it just ruined it and the brushes as well. And then you'd get about three uses out of it and you have to bin it. Absolutely. And the good thing with the, the uh, cult technology is it rinses clear. So when you go to use it for the first time or so much when you're rinsing your client for the first time at the bat wash, the colour, yeah, the water, the colour will run off the, the, the excess from the scalp or the excess that's in the foil or the packet. But after that, you'll notice that it'll just run clear. So you've got the reassurance when the client goes home. They're going to rinse it. It's going to be clear. They're not going to wake up with red pillows or, or pink towels or any of that going on because of the, the technology that's in there. Ask it out loud. I don't really know the answer, but I'll answer. <laughs> so we've got uh, Donna Hicks here who said, uh, not used this range before. And both of us are a bit like, we, you know, we don't really know about the crazy colour range. But I think that what you just said there about the pillow and the transferring and the, and the lasting longer, I think that would be my sort of top tip for the cult. There is a lot of uh, Matrix people in this chat, so hopefully we can get a bit more help on that. Yeah, definitely. I, I, I don't want to say anything bad about crazy colour because it's got its purpose and that does its thing and there'll be a lot of people that love it. Um, what I find for cult for me is I get longevity and um, I like the technology that's in there. So it's the violet based technology. So when it fades, it fades true to tone. So you're not going to have a blue that fades to a dishwater colour. You're going to have a blue that fades to a lighter shade of blue and then your yellow that fades to lighter shade of yellow. So it's the technology that's in the cult that makes me um, that makes me a big cult fan. For well, the next one, does that answer the question? <laughs> next one I'm going to do is a pink into a purple. So again, pink into purple, royal purple on its own, it's very beautiful, but again, I like to bespoke it. So we're not going to be using our lemonade and our lucky ducky yellow in this cocktail. We're going to be using the royal purple. One part royal purple, and you're not going to get to see this that much, but my big quadrant bowl, one part Royal purple to three parts. Can anyone guess? Flamenco fuchsia. So we're just softening that purple, but still. Ten points if anybody <laughs> guessed that, by the way. <laughs> right. <laughs> tones. So three parts flamenco fuchsia. Creating a really vivid purple. Sometimes that, like I say, the royal purple in its own can come across a little bit in darker sides. But just spoke it, add some flamenco. And you're flying. So cocktail that up. And then for my pink, I'm going to use, can anyone guess? Something. Sparkling rosé. Three parts sparkling rosé. To one part flamenco fuchsia. 
if I can find it, because I've just sat everything down. So one part flamenco fuchsia. But always remember when you're working with your tones as well. So if you're working with clear or you're cocktailing with a lighter colour and a darker colour, more of the clear and more of the lighter colour. So the deeper ones, darker ones, it's a lot more um, pigmented. So you don't want to be there adding, keep continuing to add and add and add. So have your have your lighter tones. So in this case, it was the sparkling rosé. And I just added the drop of the flamenco fuchsia. Well, I can see how that's going to look. And that's looking really beautiful. And we're going to get that onto this back section. Creates like a bit of a candy floss pink. Got a lot of comments Oops. coming in for you, buddy. Oh, throw them at me. <laughs> um, Donna, who asked the question originally about the crazy colour, said, uh, explain, ex excellent explanation. Thank you very much. Um, Thanks, Donna. Kim Burns said, Colt, I'd say, is more pigmented than crazy colour. Cool. Um, and then another compliment of a fab explanation. And then someone agreeing with me about the uh, the products that she's used prior, ruining the salon, towels, etc. cetera. Um, oh my God, I'm sold. Pink is my favorite color, Nicholas Soul. Yes. And then bless Just her, try Eleni doesn't have Matrix in Cyprus. Oh. Eleni, I'm going to have to send you one. I don't know if that's allowed, is it? <laughs> So again, what we're doing is we're just playing with the cocktails. So if anyone's just joined, we're creating our own bespoke cocktails. So it's like going to Revolution on a Saturday night when they're throwing the cocktails at you. You're just going to get your own bespoke cocktail, bespoke colour for that client and for you. It's just, it's a great way to play with cult. It really is. So you can see that purple. We've got some, the pink tones are coming through. The purple tones, It's uh, it just makes it a lot more, yeah. I just, it's one of my favourites. And then into the pink formula. So it's almost like a real kind of candy pink because we know that flamenco on its own is stunning. Sparkle and rosy on its own, stunning, but mix the two of them together and blend it in with a purple. And you got a beautiful cocktail. So I, again, keeping the ends completely locked away in your hand, making sure that you don't get any of this root colour into the ends. Working with a really clean eye, clean placement. Ta -da! And what I'll do is I'll swap it around for the section on the top. So we'll go in with the pink on the root area and then we'll go in with the royal purple through the mids and ends. Um, so yeah, I uh, started using Matrix Cult as soon as it came out and uh, just, it was what a, what a little tip, what I'd done as I coloured a weft of hair. So we cut a weft of hair up into well, like two, three inch sections and we coloured each of the, the different colours available in the, in the, uh, the coloured the weft and sat that in the stations. It was sitting there for the clients and stuff. So the amount of clients that then would be sitting on their hair done, picking it up, like, oh, this looks nice, holding it up against their hair and, and just seeing what the colour would look like. It just gained so much vivid interest. And uh, yeah, it was a great little tip that we'd picked up from somewhere and, and it works really well and clients get to see it in front of them. And uh, yeah, a little tip to take back to your salons. If you can, uh, if you, when we get back to salons, especially in England. Loving that. Uh, Mary Ann Milner said, loves cold, but don't get all the shades. Ah, oh, Mary Ann, well, if you don't get all the shades, as long as you've got your three primary colours, you can create them. Great answer that, man. Not going to lie, that's top end, that. Can make anything as long as you've got your primaries. Literally, what what is it you're missing? Tell us what you haven't got, and I'll throw some things at you. Throw some cocktails. So look at that beautiful pink. That's not in the cult range, but that's made just again sparkling rosy flamenco fuchsia. Boom, stunning candy pink. Just looks as a full head application or a block somewhere. It's stunning. So get that in there. Saturate it through. Elaine is trying to get an army together of people to prove that you said you would send colour over now, so you have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I need to be careful what I say in these lives. I don't want to get in trouble. And there we go, the purple coming in as well. Any cocktails you want me to try making for the other side, guys? I've got a whole uh, palette of colours here. I like this. Uh, I'm, I'm a fan of greens. What kind of greens can we do? I love a green. Green, well, you've got a green here, Simon. You not see it? Yeah, it's at the bottom, isn't it? I'm just trying to think of like, something else on the other side. 
some definitely. Let's have a look. Uh, okay. Blue, green, we've got all that family of colour to come in, haven't we? Yep. So let's get on the other side. So let me just write up on the board. The pink is, just so I remember, uh, can't get my, uh, my lid off because I've got damp hands. Yeah, I, um, like I say, we use a lot. Probably, we use Colt probably in the salon every day, a one way, shape, or form. Um, Flamenco and I'll write rosé. We know what I mean. It's like a wine. Remember, we're in a cocktail bar, so this is wine. So it was like three parts rosé to one part flamenco, and it just gives you that real nice candy pink. All right, let's start on the other side. Julie says Actually, she does have a friend, sorry, who is always uh, game for weird but she, uh, and wonderful colours, but unfortunately she's not her client. So I would say tempt her in by putting out there what you uh, want to get back there. If you if that's what you want to do, start doing it and then she'll come crawling. Absolutely. And another little thing before I jump on the other side, I'm going to show you a, a little product that I've got in front of me. So basically this head, before I start on this side, this head was a replica of this head. They were both identical. They both had, they were both for a class. And I used a brand new product, which is super exciting for any vivid lover to erase this out of the hair, to erase this out of this. So I don't know if you've seen it. You might have seen it flying about on the old social medias. Cult eraser. Matrix are launching the, the so-called cult eraser, which is huge in America. And we've just been waiting for it to come to the UK. And I think it's launching at the end of this month. And that's what I use to remove all of that colour from this head, giving us this canvas. Incredible. Hey, mate, you're flying up the charts. I ain't even been sent one of them yet. <laughs> and uh, this is a little visual, actually, that I put together, because I think this is great to see a little visual. So let me make sure you can see that. You see that all right? This was the direct mermaid teal with a drop of Admiral Navy. Now, traditionally, when you were trying to raise direct... I don't know, I've been in, I've worked with stylists that would use like a bleach and water. I've worked with stylists that would use a bleach and 20 ball and a shampoo mix. So we obviously know direct colour sits on the outside cuticle of the hair. When we work with a 20 ball or a bleach with a 20 ball and a shampoo mix, we're going to shove that colour molecule further into the hair, make it harder to remove. This is the eraser with water, only water. Taking the sachet, 90 mils of water, mixing it in, working it through the hair. That was on for 25 minutes. That was on for 45 minutes. It's incredible. It's going to be a complete game changer for creative colour, um, for, for you as a creative stylist to, to try different things with your clients when they come through the door. So I hope that makes sense. But yeah, super exciting. How long does it take to remove the colour if you, if you know the answer to that one? How long do you leave it on for? Time can be up to, uh, like, I think the maximum time is like 45 minutes or so, development time. Um, or fit, maybe an hour actually, Simon. I'm not 100% sure on that, to be fair. It's on the packet, actually. Let me read the packet and I'll just tell you. In John's defense, yeah, there, by the way, the reason I'm asking that is because the product's not even out yet. So that's why we're both learning at the same time on that one. Yeah, it's super, super exciting. And um, like I said, you can see what it done on that blue, on that, on that swatch. And that was a real swatch that was done in the salon as well. So it, it just cleaned it straight out. It was fantastic. So what cocktail do we want to see on this side? Cassandra's asked for, do one part mermaid teal to three parts bambi yeah. bambino blue or bambino blue? We haven't got bambino blue in this country. Discontinue, whatever you want to say. You've got, have you not got any? No, that's a uh, bambino blue. Was that not? Yeah, yeah, it was. Ah. It. Was it? Yeah. Did it make it? It didn't make it over here, did it? I did, I'm not going to lie, I did get some in lockdown one, thanks to Matrix. Um, <laughs> but... Uh, it's quite a good colour actually it doesn't go on blue and that scared me it, it goes on green and I mixed a green and a blue and I couldn't remember yeah. which one was which when I uh, when I put them next to each other I'm not aware that's a bit scary isn't it I think that was the blue as well the blue looks a little bit green when you put it on and then suddenly it starts to change so I'm going to create let's do the mermaid teal again mixing it into my bowl of quadrants and let's have a little bit of fun with some Admiral Navy, we'll add some blue in there. 
Dun, dun, dun. Little dollop of blue. And then let's stick in some... Should we stick in some disco silver and see what happens with that? Sounds good to me. Obviously, Sounds good to me. We're not going to get the results of this on this live, but as soon as I've uh, finished the live, I'll get the head washed and dried, and then we'll get the pictures on here so you can see how the colours looked. So that was two parts Mermaid Teal, one part Admiral Navy, three parts Disco Silver. Don't ask me that again. <laughs> And what I'm going to do is, what should we blend that into? Just thinking what I've got in front of me, where we can... We're going to blend that into a royal purple. Dun, dun, dun. With disco silver mixed in with it. Again, getting a little bit creative. I wish you could see my bar here. I've got, like, it does look like a bar top. Just making an absolute mess everywhere. And that short man at the end of the bar with his hand up getting angry that you're not ignoring, <laughs> that you're ignoring me. <laughs> Waving your hand. Yeah. Like, Come on, serve me. Serve me £10 oh, not. How long has it been since we've all been able to have a bloody uh, a nice social drink together? It's awful. I know, I know. Um, Kim Burns has said she's used the eraser and it was amazing. Warm water, 20 minutes, and it faded the blue to a yellow and it was gone clean. And then it was left as a clean blonde. Amazing. Absolutely amazing, Kim. And actually... I know Kim and uh, we were having a chat on a, a class the other week because Kim was like, I want to get hold of it. So I'm really chuffed to manage to get hold of some as well. That's really cool. So here is a little blue cocktail. I need to write this down somewhere because when I come to wash this off and anyone asks, Simon will forget. <clears throat> a lot of uh, a lot of comments coming in here. Can't wait to use the eraser. Does it compromise the hair from Lucy AK? Well, that's a really good question. And what actually I'll do at the end is, again, I'll show you the swatch because the swatches were not conditioned. So a bit of shampoo on there, rinsing it out, and they weren't conditioned. The condition of the hair was incredible. And like I say, it's only mixed with water. There's a um, there's a, a product in there, a peroxide in there, and it's designed to pull the pigment forward. So that's what it's done. Instead of pushing it out, it's going to pull it forward and it doesn't compromise, over-compromise the hair in any way, shape or form. Awesome. Uh, one question we have about um, about Cult is, it's off Rosie Briscoe, who said, uh, yeah. do you shampoo this colour off or do you just rinse them off? So gentle shampoo to remove any from the scalp, but generally what I would recommend is the Keep Me Vivid lamination spray. For everything vivid, Cult, Anything like that, like use your lamination spray. So your lamination spray comes in a bottle like that, and that's the backwash treatment. So you rinse all the colour out, rinse it, rinse it until it's rinsing clear, and then spray the lamination spray in and emulsify that into the scalp. Create um, create the shampoo in effect because you don't actually need to shampoo or condition because it's almost got all of that built into it and it's laminating the cuticle and locking that colour in. So by all means. It feels a bit weird not shampooing a client, but actually using that and giving the shampoo and feeling so the client still gets that feeling. Yeah, that's what I would recommend. Elimination spray. Great answer that, mate. Just a little advert there for everybody who's watching. Rosie is doing a live on Wednesday night. Um, I don't know if you'll be watching, John, but I can't draw and I'm going to have a go. I'm going to have to do it because I've always loved when you see the hairdressers and the artistic side of it and I can't do it, so I'm going to try. It sounds really cool. I've been watching... Um, the videos and the teasers and stuff and i actually have never done anything like that myself so i'd be super super interested in i'm jumping on and, and seeing what it's all about definitely so again i'm using the purple formula that we created earlier now i should be taking a really really fine section and working really really finely here but i'm just getting it on to show you so i can get on with the next cocktail because i'm dead excited to play with cocktails So uh, Simon at Saks has asked, is it similar to the 10 in 1 spray? I presume she's on about the laminate spray. I'm not. What is the 10 in 1 spray? I've not heard of that. So is it, um, is it a 10 in 1 spray L'Oreal? Do you mean the Miracle Creator? Is that what uh, I think she might mean that one, the Miracles spray? Uh, no. 10 in 1 is the L'Oreal version, if I remember rightly, yes. uh, Amanda. So that's like a treatment. Is that like a like an all in one, like a heat defense? Yeah, heat protect, the tangle. Uh, it's an absolutely fantastic product. Much like uh, 
most of them products they, they last five minutes because you can spray it too generously because it's that good you want to put yeah. as much as you can on the hair no so it's completely different the the lamination spray is like a backwash mini treatment if you will you could charge extra for it in the salon so you could speak to your clients offer them the lamination service for i don't know an extra four or five pound on top of a bill um, but it's not for the client to take away the client would take away the shampoo and the conditioner after that you just keep that at the back wash for you so you want to see a green simon let's make a yes. green let's make something right let me make sure we can still see all right because i'm khaki left-handed in fact we'll spin it that way nice all right yeah perfect yeah i am um, we have call on all age groups of clients we don't, it's not just for, well, it's like vivid colours change, doesn't it? It's not about, like years ago, you know, you wouldn't see, you wouldn't imagine your granny walking about with flamenco fuchsia highlights. And now it's like the norm, isn't it? I don't know about you, Simon. Do you do a lot of vivids in your salon? You do, you do don't you? Yeah, yeah, we, we're quite uh, out there for, for my town. I live in a small town, for those who don't know it, in the northwest near near John, but it's uh, called Burnley. And, uh, yeah, the clients that we have, they're not, there's not a massive range of them, but the ones that are in the town, I, I guess, I dare say that we attract. Yeah. Which goes back to oh, my put it out there and they will come. That's exactly it. And I'm, I'm a big believer on that on social media as well. So if you start to push your vivids on your social medias or ask for vivid models, then you're going to get a lot more of that in return. You're going to going to attract that clientele. So I'm adding my lemonade to my clover green. Let's just see what we create. For all the clients that are thinking about doing it, for the sorry, the stylists thinking about doing it, uh, gents hair is a massively popular thing in my salon. And um, it's such an easier sort of application on gents hair to get you brave, to get you feeling strong. And it's an easy sort of upsell on a product. So you, you can quite charge quite well for it and you get a really good result. Definitely, definitely agree with you, Simon. We, we never used to be a really big vivid salon. And again, the power of social media, we started to put it out there. We started to create um, on friends, on models, and then just out of nowhere, it just started to build up. And then, yeah, it, it just, again, the law of attraction, um, having plays on swatches and models, friends taking pictures. Clients come into my salon and it's like they, they know that they're going to be there for a photo shoot as well. So it's almost like, guys, be prepared, wear something nice, give yourself an extra half hour on top of your head appointment. We're having a full on photo shoot. Tell us about a bit more about that, mate. I want to know a bit about you because uh, obviously you talk about your vivids and your clientele, but you are actually uh, sort of advisors. Is it, tell me the correct term, but it's LGBTQ uh, plus friendly, is it? Is that what the word, the technical? Yeah, LGBTQ plus. So oh, we, we were voted, um, we were voted like the Northwest number one. LGBTQ plus salon uh, for creating safe space in the community. And um, we have a big LGBTQ plus following and, and a big sort of queer, yeah, a big, a big following in the queer community. We have, again, all about safe spaces for staff or clients coming through the door, non judgmental. Um, yeah, I'm really big on that, really big on creating safe spaces. And Absolutely. also, we're part, I mean, the same as you, Simon, we're part of a collective group of industry experts and a group called We Are Unity on mm -hmm. Instagram, you know, thriving for change in the industry. So we're part of a group and Simon's part of it as well. And we're there on, in this group and we're there to help and support and we help anybody coming up in the industry, whether that be a young individual that's maybe getting bullied in the workplace or whether that's an LGBTQ plus issue in the workplace. Like we're there to help and support. So follow We Are Unity on Instagram as well and uh, reach out if there ever is anything you need any help or support or questions with. Yeah, we're massive fan, mate. And you should be proud of that title because it's uh, it's not an easy feat to make everybody, no matter what their sexuality, race or ever, gender, feel equally accepted. And I think that's an amazing sort of treat to, to have as a disabled man myself. Um it, you know, it falls into that category as well. And I think it's amazing that you do that, mate. Well done. Absolutely. We're very, um, we're a right bunch of characters that work in the salon and probably like your salon, Simon, as well. You know, we're so laid back, down to often. We treat people how 
how we want to be treated and, and you know it's all about safe spaces and safe environments and that's a big thing definitely right i've lost my train of path that's what happens when i get passionate talking about something so <laughs> we've done our yellow a uh, green cocktail into the kind of peachy color at the end so our yellow was in this green and our yellow was in the peach so i know that they're going to diffuse they're going to blend well together so i'm going to swap that around for the top we're nearly coming to the last section so somebody needs to throw a cocktail at me that I can pick for the last section that you want to see. Throw something at me. Uh, Amanda just said, uh, awesome, well done. On average, 60% of clients feel anxious about going into the salon. Well done for your support and work. Great news. Um, definitely, Amanda. And we're all, yeah, we're all for safe spaces. Big smiles at the desk and and if I could give you a hug, I would, because we're just that kind of team. I'm going to hug you, and that's we're missing that at the minute. It all seems very cold, doesn't it? You know, you can't smile to a client. You can't hug a client. It's just COVID's just taken all of that away for a short time, but it'll be back. And all the old ladies will be coming in for the big hugs, and it'll be back to being the way it was before, hopefully. Julie Medlin has said, um, what is the lower... What is the lowest base colour you would do on this? And what is your section in or placement of your colours, please? Oh, Julie, so everything in cult, that's a really, really good question. Everything in cult has a a great starting base, like a guide for a great starting base. So you could work on a level. In fact, I'll tell you, the flamenco fuchsia, the royal purple and the red hot, they're actually designed to sit, believe it or not, on a base eight. So whereas as stylists, we sometimes think of creative colorists that we need to lift up to this platinum light level nine, ten blonde to get the brightest result. It's not the case with Colt. So Colt actually working with the, the flamenco, the red hot, the royal purple, you're going to get a better result on like a level eight. So that's the top tip actually to take away. Um, and then you've got like your, your, your sort of level eights. And then you get, so your yellows, your yellows will work better on, again, lightened as much as possible if you're working with your yellows. But then if you're going on a darker bay, like a level, a level eight, nine, and you're going to put a yellow over it, you're in, your yellow's going to look a little bit more antique a little bit more um, gold than yellow. Again, beautiful results. But yeah, there's some, with Colt, that's a great thing about Colt. And as, as well, like if you've done a, a level five, six rr six red and you glossed it with the coat at the backwash just for 10 minutes squeeze that coat over the color just giving it a pop it's going to create a beautiful red gloss over that as well so it's got a place for every level really hope that answers the question was there some was it a part two to that or was it just one question oh placement uh, placement here all i've done is small it's i've done almost straight down from the top to the bottom to the ear, and then I've split it in two. So it's like a bit of a vice versa horizontal vertical section. I always have to think about horizontal and vertical. I always get confused at the age of 36. And then I'm just diffusing that in. So again, creating a nice soft blend, working with colours that will complement each other, working around the colour wheel rather than opposite and just working with the colours that we know that will blend into each other nicely. So last section. Look at that. That is a, that is a work of art, isn't it? That is a, I was, look at that framed and we'll put it up somewhere. I was just going to say that's, the, that's a canvas in itself, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So let me, let's mix up something like, I don't know, I'll take my flamenco fuchsia bowl with my sparkling rosé. I'm going to put a little bit more flamenco fuchsia in there. Cassandra's asked for red hot and royal purple. Mm. Well, I'm actually going to put some um, red hot into the flamenco fuchsia. So let's let's do that. Well, we've got a deep question while you're mixing your cocktails here. Um, Sarah Riley. No, I'll let you take the lead on this one, my friend. Uh, just about to enter the business ownership world. Uh, what would your top tip be to introduce vivid clients? To introduce vivid clients. Oh. Vivid to the client. Sorry, vivid to the clients. I apologize. Vivid to the clients. Yeah. 
So again, like that little tip with the swatches is quite a good one. So yeah. having some wefts of hair that are coloured sitting in front. Sorry, I'm not. I'm looking down, looking for lucky ducky yellow uh, lemonade. Sorry. Um, yeah, having the swatches in front of you, pre-coloured. Play with the formulas so the client can see them, and and bring them up in conversation with the clients as well. You know, like oh, they, this is our flamenco fuchsia. This is our sparkling rosy. Get a few of the staff if you've got a team. Like, see if you can put some pops of colour in their hair. Put some pictures on social media. That's how great I play. Ideas. I think. Fantastic. Yeah, great ideas. We uh, we actually got um, a little book, like a like a photo album book. If you imagine that kind of book, and we uh, yeah. we got the staff one day, and I, and I locked down my salon for half a day. I can't remember why. I think we were doing something else initially, and then. Um, Basically, we got some swatches out, and I just basically said to them, write down every measurement you do, mix as much as you want, and here, here's the colours to do it, uh, and write down your measurements, and then save the favourite ones, and we'll put them into his own little colour pal- palette book. Uh, and that went down That's really it. well. Absolutely great idea. And then that, that colour book could be sat in your reception area or somewhere where clients sit, sitting yeah. in front of a station, so when a colour's developing, they can pick it up and have a look themselves, can't they, as well? Absolutely. And then I moved to Matrix about three weeks later, and then uh, it was surplus. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes though i think we forget like we we forget about you know your own shop front window and your own shop as your as your window and we can focus too much on social media pushing instagram and facebook but doing things like simon's tip like having having a photo album or having wefts of hair sitting so people can physically see it because not everybody's on instagram and facebook so red hot flamenco fuchsia and we're just going to run that into my lemonade Because what's going to happen in the middle, we're going to create a beautiful orange. And you know what I've done? I forgot to split this section in two. So that's my last section, guys. Dun, dun, dun. Let's blend it together and create a kind of peachy, pinky orange. That's the goal. Keeping grip of the colour on the end, so that yellow on the end is going to stay away from everything else. There's no risk of any colour going through there. And I've just run that up a bit high. We'll just diffuse it, blend it in. Pinch and rub. Yeah, Lenny says, great ideas, especially for clients to see it. We'll encourage them to ask uh, and replace the magazines. Um, and then Elaine is suggesting that Sarah Riley should have her own hair like that because then they'll want it as well. Yeah, I... Great, great. Honestly, like I think there are great tips that you could take back. And like you say, it's just a bit different than picking up trashy magazines in it. It's something that's bespoke and tailor made to the business. And also it brings the business, it brings that whole branding thing into the business. This is what you're about. This is your salon. This is your reading material. This is you as a brand. So making the client be pulled into that world of you from the minute they're sitting in reception is perfect. I'm very passionate about business and branding as well. Yeah, yeah, the there man to ask them questions. I, th- I even had asked. You're probably one of the men I'd come to for a bit of advice on that sort. So, there we go. How creative! It's like a little creative Bob Rainbow going on. I'm really looking forward to letting our process, and then I'll dry it off, and I'll take some pictures, and I'll send them to Simon, and Simon can share them out on the group. If that's all right, guys. Um, what else was I going to say to you? So we've touched the cult cocktailing. We've I've shared some really nice formulas that hopefully you've wrote them down. You can take them away. I've shared a little bit on the eraser, and I've answered some questions. <laughs> I think. Uh, I think we were going to show the swatches of the condition of the hair from the after eraser. We were. So let me just grab that. Slide hot to the side. So we see this all right. So again, if anybody's just joined, this was direct um, mermaid teal with a drop of Admiral Navy. That's stunning, isn't it? Stunning blue. And then I used the new eraser with water, cold eraser, just with water on its own. And that is how it lifted it out. Now, I haven't used any conditioner on there. The condition is soft. It's not compromised. Absolutely fine. This was with 20 ball. So again, we're pushing, what I'm there is we're pushing the colour molecule further into the hair, here, 
for pulling it out of the hair. So this is the new Matrix Cult Eraser that's launching this month. Great advert, that, mate. Well done. Really good. Um, really nice condition. And a nice little bit of rainbow. <laughs> oh, well, you, you can never go... You can never have a John Anthony without a rainbow somewhere. A uh, <laughs> couple of questions just coming in before I let you go. Um, what happens when you start to rinse at the base and do the colours run into each other? Again, great question. The technology with Matrix doesn't run, doesn't run into each other. Rinse, rinse with cool water, not cold, because it's got to be comfortable for the client, isn't it? And let's face it, you don't want cold hands. But rinse with cool water. Be mindful of the yellow. So I'm always mindful of that. But the rest of them, no, the technology is incredible. The colour runs true to tone, uh, it fades true to tone, but it rinses out clear. So like I said earlier, you'll get the excess from the scalp, You'll get the excess that's built up in your packet or whatever you've put it in, but then it'll, it'll rinse clear and it'll rinse, uh, it'll not smudge and bleed. Uh, one more question before I just read out a, a funny comment, and uh, that's um, mm -hmm. how long do you leave it to develop again, sorry? Again, up to 30 minute development time, depending on what you are creating. So if it's a glossing service at the backwash, you've done your colour, you want to gloss with coat, the backwash, that could be anything up to sort of 15 minutes. If you are uh, doing a whole creative work, you want to leave it on for as long as possible, up to 30 minutes. Um, and then the the comment is, uh, I'm coming to Blackpool after this lockdown. I want a day cocktail in with John Anton, and that's from Gemma Farquhar. <laughs> Gemma Farquhar? Yeah. yeah. Um, and then yes. the people are saying, Sarah Riley saying, pick me up on the way. Julie said, yes, please, me too. I'm in Cornwall, though. So, yeah, the, the, everyone wants a day with John Anton. Come to Blackpool. Follow us on Instagram. John Anthony here. Um, like I say, reach out if you've got any questions. I'm part of the Matrix Education team, but I'm also a hairdresser like you guys. I work in the salon, you know, every day of the week, and um, I'm using the product as well seem as educating. Seems to be um, a Matrix art team, I heard. You what? So it seems to be Matrix art team, I'm, I'm thinking, mate. Don't know about you. I'm part of, uh, yeah, we're part of the national education team, so who knows what's going to happen. <laughs> but it's, it's really exciting, so just watch, keep an eye on the future. And uh, any cult questions, just throw them at me. And I look forward to having a day in the salon with everybody making cocktails.